The only item not present in your kit that you will need to provide is a ruler. Use a ruler to measure the width and length of a piece of paper in millimeters and centimeters. Completely fill a test tube with tap water. Pour the water from the test tube into the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Using a piece of paper as a background makes it easier to read. The surface of the water is flat. But if you see a curved surface called a meniscus, use the lowest point of the curve. The direct measurement of the solid will depend on the shape of your solid. Here we have a hex nut. Its shape is a hexagonal prism. To find volume of a hexagonal prism, measure its base and height. The hole in the middle of the hex nut has the shape of a cylinder. To find the volume of this cylinder, measure the height of the cylinder and the radius by measuring the diameter of the hole and dividing by 2. Next, subtract the volume of the cylinder from the volume of the hexagonal prism. To indirectly find the volume of the solid, measure 85 milliliters of tap water in the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Make sure to record volume measurement as described in your procedures. Tilt the graduated cylinder and slowly slide the solid into the water. This way water does not splash out of the graduated cylinder and give you an inaccurate volume. Record the volume of the solid in water. Now you can calculate the volume of the solid by water displacement. To directly weigh the solid, turn on the balance and allow the mass to read zero. Place the solid on the balance and record the mass in grams. To weigh the solid indirectly, place a 100 milliliter beaker on the balance and record its mass. Place the solid in the beaker and record the combined mass. Calculate the mass of the solid by subtracting the mass of the empty beaker from the combined mass of the beaker and solid. You will weigh the empty 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and record its mass. Do this three times and record your measurements as trial 1, 2, and 3. Begin trial 1 and use a plastic pipette to add about 3 milliliters of unknown A to the graduated cylinder. Record the exact volume of unknown A. Place the graduated cylinder with unknown A on the balance and record its mass. To find the mass of unknown A, trial 1, subtract the mass of the empty graduated cylinder, trial 1, from the mass of the graduated cylinder and unknown A. Use unknown A's mass and volume to calculate its density. For the second trial, you will add about 2 more milliliters of unknown A on top of the unknown A from trial 1. Record the volume. It should be around 5 milliliters. Place the graduated cylinder back on the balance to record the mass. Subtract the mass of the empty graduated cylinder from trial 2 from the mass of the graduated cylinder and unknown A. Use the mass and volume of unknown A, trial 2, to calculate density. For trial 3, add another 2 milliliters to the graduated cylinder and record the volume of unknown A for trial 3 should be around 7 milliliters. Place the graduated cylinder on the balance and record the mass. Calculate the mass on unknown A trial 3 by subtracting the mass of the empty graduated cylinder trial 3 from the mass of the graduated cylinder with unknown A. Calculate the density of unknown A trial 3. Calculate average density of unknown A from the three trials and use the provided density table to identify unknown A.